Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I am going to be talking about all things LA. So as you all know, or I don't know if you, some of you might not know, I just recently hit a year in LA. Yeah! And I want to tell you all about LA that I've learned, things that I had to learn the hard way. And if you're considering living here or moving here, um, these are definites that you should know prior to moving. Before we get into the video, please don't forget to like this video because I'm dropping some gems and also subscribe to my channel and share with friends. Let's get into the video. into it so I know for a lot of people the first thing they think of when they hear about LA is oh my gosh it's so expensive and is that true is it a myth yes and no so LA is expensive but I just feel like when you already have that preconceived notion you kind of go into a situation like oh I can't afford it and I don't like that kind of thinking so Yes, a lot of things in LA, the cost of living is more, that's a fact, but it's possible. So don't ever let that be what makes you second guess moving here. So, for example, of course, the cost of living is more, so you get paid more. So I know when I first moved here, I wasn't shocked because I used to live in New York. And I'm going to do another video comparing New York and LA just because, but... So when I first moved here, I noticed that just simple things like necessities in the grocery store, lotion, things like that are going to be maybe like $3 more here. Food is going to be like $3 more here. I know in Charlotte, I can easily get a good old entree fish plate for like less than $10 when here you're probably going to get a good fish plate for like $15. Or, um, I've never been able to really get lunch here less than $10. And that's just, it is what it is. Um, but in Charlotte, you could easily get good food for under, maybe like six, five dollars Um, maybe not the best food, but you know what I mean. Like, you can easily get a meal for the under $10 in Charlotte. And LA, for me, I have yet to experience that. But I don't mind it because I love the food here. I actually really do. I love how fresh it is. I love brunch here. It's tons of good brunch places. Like, oh, I'm going to take y'all to like all my favorite brunch spots when outside opens back up because I'm the brunch queen. I'm the restaurant queen. I love eating. So they have a lot of fresh foods that I like, but that's besides the point. So because things are a lot more like necessities, that means you get paid more. So that brings me to my next point is you must have extra income to live here. A lot of people that you meet will have two to three jobs. And that is just because they have a lifestyle that they want to keep up with. And they have one job that pays the bills, but then another one to let them brunch on the weekends, you know. So for me, I'm a freelance publicist. When I first moved out here, I didn't have a job and I had, I didn't even have any clients at the point, I, at this point, I just moved to LA and I stayed with a friend, which is always good to get on your feet. And I started working a job that was kind of in my field, but I just didn't really like it. And so eventually I got another job that I liked. But then you guys can go to my channel and figure out and see what happened with that job that made me end up becoming an entrepreneur again. And now I'm back to doing freelance work, working on my business, having PR clients, plus working on my business, Black Girls in Media. So having these businesses, running these businesses, as you know, entrepreneur life has its ups and downs. 
So my best friend presented me like a new business opening and said they were hiring. And I was skeptical because I didn't really want to work for anybody else. I said in my last video or my video that I talked about my job, I said that I'm not going to get a job again. Like this is the last time I ended up working for somebody else. Full time entrepreneur is me. But this job that my best friend presented me with, it was more so a part time job. And I figured, okay, yeah, I could do that because it wasn't anything in my field. No strings attached. This job doesn't have to know what I'm doing on my in my spare time. They don't have to know that I have businesses. It's just a job that I report to whenever it works for my hours and I can get extra income and like a steady paycheck. Because you guys know, like, I like to live comfortably. Like I said, I like to eat out. I like to hang with my friends. I like to shop. So, this is how I balance it. You'll meet a lot of actresses or aspiring actresses that work at a restaurant. And that's so common here because everyone's hustling. Everyone's getting at how they live and affording the lifestyle that they want. But at the same time, working towards their goal. So that's perfectly normal. That's what I did. With all this going on, I don't have the part-time anymore. So now I'm just back to freelancing and full-time entrepreneurship, which I'm used to anyway. So, yeah, that is, I mean, and then the outside isn't open anyway. So it's not like I'm struggling or anything because I'm not really spending unnecessary money. And I'm just using my freelance income to supplement but yeah so that would be my number one point in moving or living in LA is to have extra income grind get it how you live and don't feel bad for having multiple jobs because that's just the lifestyle here and work until you don't have to anymore okay so for my next point number two speaking of working hard and grinding my next point is staying focused, okay? You guys know LA is a big city and there's always stuff going on. There's always events, there's always tourists, there's always friends hitting you up saying that they're coming to visit and there's a lot going on. So my next point is staying focused. You have to remember that you came to LA for a purpose. No one really come, moves to LA just for the heck of it you know what I mean everyone has a purpose and it's easy for you to forget why you moved here and to get caught up in the life and when I say the life I mean the party and then the events and there's nothing wrong with going to these things but when you let that consume your life you forget about your goals and why you came here in the first place um, I heard a quote before I believe it was Karen Civil she said that LA is a place where you can either find yourself or lose yourself and I so completely agree with that because I've seen a lot of people move here and they are just always in the hills at the parties just being out of control and it's like they don't even reach their goals they're just like caught up in the life and then I've seen people move here and take LA by storm and dominate their field and just expand their brand so that is what I'm doing so when I first moved here I told you guys that I lived with my roommate and I didn't have a job so I used that time to stand ten toes down apply to jobs and save until I could get out on my own so with with that I didn't go out at all I cooked at home stayed in for what the first the first six months of me moving to LA I didn't go out not once and that was great so I will admit, once I finally got my own place and I was kind of comfortable here finally, I did start going out more, but I was able to re like bring it back in and just find that balance. So yeah, I go out on the weekends or I'll go out to some events if it makes sense, but at the same time, I have to force myself to stay focused. And I mean, it is a great city. I love living here. The weather's great. So on a weekend... Do you really want to stay home and do some work when friends are inviting you to like the beach or brunch? No, it's tempting, but that's where the focus comes in and you just got to remember why you're here. Also, so when you live here, 
of course you have a lot of friends that want to visit you but then also they just want to visit LA so I'll have like so many friends text me like hey I'm coming to LA next week and you have to remember that just because they're on vacation doesn't mean you're on vacation so of course you can hang with them maybe go out to eat with them once but you just have to might you just might have to remind them you know like I'm not gonna go out every single night you're here I still have job I still have a job to do um, I have a job to report to in the morning or whatever you just have to you know create boundaries but also you know enjoy your time enjoy your friends that come visit because it is a great place overall next tip would have to be uh, traffic okay I know everyone says LA traffic is horrible and it is I have snacks just to eat when I'm in traffic okay um, I listen to whole albums on my commutes that's how bad traffic is but what I will say is a tip to making sure you're on time especially important places you have meetings or interviews always leave an hour early at least uh, look up your destination ahead of time and if it says 30 minutes away just leave an hour ahead because you never know the time you leave might bring on a lot of traffic and before you know it you're an hour out instead of 30 minutes um, I've made that mistake before so make sure you just always give yourself that cushion calculate the time and then add 30 more minutes to that just to avoid any problems and then also traffic I mean also parking which takes some time to do so that's my other point tra uh, parking so downtown of course you have a lot of parking decks and most neighborhoods have parking but if you're in like certain areas like Beverly Hills street parking might be designated just for that neighborhood like if the sign says permit only you would get told because that is just for the neighborhood parking so you have to of course pay attention to the complicated signs and also just don't park anywhere that says no parking because people are waiting to tell you that's how they make their money and um yeah, this is why you give yourself cushion because parking can be hard to find, street parking. Um, there's a lot of meter parking, so make sure that you have coins or your card to use. Yeah, you don't want to rack up on tickets. Like, I had one ticket, but I paid it because I know someone who never paid their tickets, and before they knew it, their car was towed, and they had to pay, like, thousands of dollars to get it out. So... Don't ever be in that predicament. Be smart. Don't risk it. If it doesn't feel right, don't park there. And if you're driving to West Hollywood or Hollywood in general at night, definitely Uber because there will be no parking whatsoever. So Uber is your friend, especially when you're out, no drinking and driving, guys. Also, I would say for driving on the highway, do not drive in the carpool lane. This might be common sense to y'all, but for me, I had to learn the hard way. And I was like, how do they even know like, if I have somebody in the car with me? Wrong. They got me. I was driving, cruising, and then a few weeks later, I got a picture of me. They had like the picture of my car in the carpool lane and gave me a ticket. So do not drive in the carpool lane if you're not carpooling. Highway traffic is just like street traffic depending on the time of day, especially like when you get to your rush hours, it's going to be a lot of traffic and just in general, it's constant traffic, but really is jam packed when it comes to rush hours. So if you can avoid it, avoid it. Um, but right now with quarantine going on and all that, it's literally no traffic and I'm kind of enjoying it and it's the grocery stores aren't packed and all that and then once everything comes back to normal I'm gonna be grateful but then I'm gonna be like oh I missed that because I felt like I was back in Charlotte in the grocery stores uh, this week I was like oh my gosh there's nobody around me like reaching over me so that was good I think those are the main points that I can think of when it comes to living LA if you're thinking about it if you live in LA and you have other tips feel free to share them down below and if you have any other questions for me as far as living in LA, um, comment below and let me know. So like I said, these are my four tips that I have for you. My next video, I'm going to compare LA to New York and maybe even North Carolina. 
And then also I'm going to do some like dating videos about LA because I have an opinion about that. So I know someone asked me what do I like most and least about working in LA. I think what I like most about LA is just like New York big cities, the network that you can grow from working here. You go to one event, you're meeting so many great people and just being able to move to a new location and setting a name for yourself and a, a reputation. I think that's exciting for me because I just got here so I feel like I'm still just now building my LA network but it's great I feel like there's so many talented people here everyone's willing to put in the work and work together and that's what I love about working in LA what I like least about working in LA um I would say maybe the competition but I wouldn't say I like that the least it just means I have to go harder and prove my name because there are a lot of already established people here, so that just makes me go harder because it's like, oh, y'all don't know me yet, but y'all are going to very soon. That's what I like most and least about working in LA. Someone asked, do I have any tips on transitioning from school to work after graduation or tips to moving to LA? So I think this video gives you a good synopsis on moving to LA. Um, I would also say like it's okay if you don't have a job after graduation as long as you have a clear path and vision I think that's all you need because like I said I moved here with like $300 and a friend's couch you know and that's a lot of people's stories when they move here so it's just all about you have to have that determination that it's going to all work out and it doesn't necessarily have to be all in place so to each its own for me I didn't save up, I didn't make sure everything was right, I'm just a believer of faith and I just jump when I want to jump or when God says to jump. So if he's saying that to you, then go ahead and jump. So school to work after graduation, I would say prior to graduation, start applying to places, start networking, emailing people, reaching out to people, letting them know where you're about to be living, things like that. Um, and making sure you're starting these connections and laying that foundation for once you graduate. And also don't stress if you have graduated, I graduated and didn't have a job. So if you're applying to these places and graduation is approaching, uh, don't be stressed out if you don't have a job yet because I promise you it's gonna all work out on its own during the timeline that it's supposed to. So as long as you're doing the work and staying on your path you will be a-okay okay and also list out where you want to live list out the pros and cons and once you figure out where you want to live after graduation start making those connections start reaching out and set up those meetings bring value to people and once you get there don't forget why you're there and dominate okay I believe in you you should believe in yourself I know you do because you're amazing. All right, guys. Well, that is it. I will see you in my next video. Please subscribe for more. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, stay true to yourself. Love you. Bye. Mwah.